What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. And my name is Chico Moya. Consider subscribing to the channel because this is an awesome channel. So I recently did a video titled Being Black in Finland. And I thought I should do a quick follow up on that video because it needed one. And I'm just going to start off by saying, in all honesty, I don't like talking about this sort of stuff. <laughs> and there's a simple reason for that. And it's because it annoys me. It annoys me that I have to address this, this issue. It annoys me that people are not using their brains to just view things objectively and to use their brains to analyze things as opposed to slapping labels on things. And I don't proclaim to speak for every black person. I'm obviously just speaking for myself and my own personal experiences and having come from South Africa and experienced xenophobia and racism and all of that sort of stuff and still having been able to live and survive through that and then moving to Finland and experiencing this, I feel like I have my own unique perspective that that I can give. So Something you need to know about me is this. I hate, hate being the victim. Of course, there are certain situations in life where victimhood is placed upon you, whether you want it or not. But I'd say the type of person I am is that even if I was in a position where victimhood was placed upon me like chains that tied me down, I would still try and find a way out. I will try and find a way out mentally or emotionally. I genuinely believe that me as a human being, I as a human being have the choice on how I view the world. Because I, I recently read a book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. And he was in the concentration camps for around three years. And he's a psychologist and he somehow managed to survive this, the, the concentration camps. So the whole point of the book is how he was able to find meaning in basically one of the darkest places a human being can ever find themselves in. I'm not drawing parallels between... <laughs> That's kind of funny. I'm not drawing parallels between the concentration camps and Finland. I'm just using that as an example to show you that... I really value people who see things that are bad and are still able and willing to stand up and keep pushing forward. And now, listen, something like apartheid in South Africa was really terrible. It was overwhelming. It tied people down. It dehumanized people. And it was a stain on humanity. And you can say the same thing about slavery and also a bunch of other oppressive things that happened to other cultures and other people throughout human history. We can agree on that. But we are living in an incredible time right now. We are living in a time where people are richer than they've ever been. We are living at a time where there's so much to be grateful for. And I'm always taken aback when I find that people always find a reason to bloody complain. Now, listen, I'm not saying that if you see something wrong, you shouldn't talk about it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I feel like people go out of their way to find what is wrong. And that just uh, annoys me personally um, for several reasons. One of them is the fact that there is so much hypocrisy going on. And I, and I guess I'll get into that in a little bit. And then the second thing is that when it comes to a country like Finland, where I'm staying right now, one thing I've noticed is that people love to make one-to-one -one comparisons, right? Like I made, like I said in the other video, people seem to only be able to view the world in a lens that says that there's the oppressor and oppressed. The oppressor usually looks white and the oppressed looks black. And then they basically take history 
They take South African history, they take American history, and they use that lens to view a place like Finland. And by doing that, it shows me that people are not being analytical and they are just following what other people are saying. You know, Finland is completely white. So therefore, therefore, it should be completely racist. When I came here, I will be lying if if I said that I wasn't expecting to experience racism. But coming from South Africa, I was like, how bad can it be? And for the first six months, I wasn't allowed to work because I was waiting for papers and stuff. And as soon as my papers came through, I jumped on the first opportunity I could get. And for me at that time was door to door fundraising for a an organization called Doctors Without Borders. So <laughs> think about this. I'm new to Finland. I get this job and they tell me that I have to go door to door in different apartment buildings and go from each apartment building door, knock and then speak to the person and somehow try and convince them to start paying a monthly fee to some organization. Right. So I felt very uncomfortable about that for several reasons. Number one was because in South Africa, I was always really concerned about my skin color in terms of how people would perceive me. And so if I went into a completely white neighborhood, in the back of my mind, I always had this idea of trying to make myself look as least threatening as I could because being black meant that I would be profiled as someone who <laughs> sounds so bad to say. <laughs> I would be I'd be profiled as someone who um, could possibly be a thief or something. And because South Africa is like over 70, 78 percent or something black, which means and a lot of the Poor people are black and a lot of the crimes are done by black people. Some, I mean, just do the math, right? So I always walked around with that feeling over my shoulder. Now I'm in Finland and everyone's white. And now I'm going door to door into buildings I haven't been invited in. And I have this heavy sense of I'm trying to make myself look not so threatening and I'm worried someone's going to come and kick, like be angry and kick, kick me out. And that was the mindset that I had. And guys, quick pause in the video. If you are enjoying my content, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. And also I'm trying to do this a lot more often. And if you want to support me, if you genuinely want to support me, I have merchandise now. I've got a bunch of different stuff like hoodies, t-shirts and stuff. It's now at the bottom there so you can look through. I've got a bunch of different things that say different things like this one behind me at the back. It says I tasted Salmiaki and survived. <laughs> so um, if you're interested, do that. But otherwise, just a like and a subscription works. Thank you. Now to my absolute surprise. Things did not go the way I expected them to. When I went door to door, the strangest thing happened. And that was more people than I expected were actually kind and gracious. It, it genuinely blew me away. I mean, I I would knock on the door and I would start off by trying to speak uh, Finnish. <laughs> I was pretty new. So I was just like... Moi, uh, mi no nimi on chik, mi, <laughs> moi, mi no nimi on chico, puhut ko englandia. <laughs> I don't know why trying to remember this is making me laugh, but I just remember I would try and use as much Finnish as I could. Um, even Doctors Without Borders, I call it Lakerit Ilman Rayoya. I noticed that there were so many people. So many people were just kind and gracious. There were several times where I was, invited, I was invited in someone's apartment, which I wasn't allowed to do, but I did it anyway, because every time you got a signature, you got like extra commission. So, you know, whatever. There were people who 
called me in, made me some tea, asked me questions that, you know, this went completely against the narrative that I created in my head. And this was in someone's most sacred place, which is home. And there I am being invited in. And again, I will reiterate, this is my own experience. But then people tell me that this is the most racist country in Europe. And it simply does not track for me. So the thing that I wanted to get to before in terms of people having a certain lens on how they view the world, the thing is, it's not only limited to how people view a country like Finland. It's how people view the West and the hypocrisy in that. So, for example, Japan makes it very hard for for someone to become a citizen or they, they make immigration really tough. And if Japanese people say that, hey, we're just trying to preserve our culture and our way of life and that sort of thing, most people are like, yeah, you know, we completely get it. It's Japanese history that is your thing. And people respect that. They don't call it racist. They just, it's just a cultural thing because to a lot of Westerners, Japanese people do not embody and do not look like the traditional oppressor as we have come to know them now, i.e. looking white. But if another country like say Finland says that, hey, listen, or at least the, the people are like, hey, listen, we don't mind people immigrating here and adding to the economy and stuff, but we want to protect what we have here. Then folk are so re ready to jump on the racist bandwagon because they, they look like something else. They look white and white equals oppressor and oppressor equals bad and someone who causes harm. And this is the type of mentality some Westerners, well, a lot of Westerners have against the West. And the thing that I find hypocritical about this is the fact that Western countries are the ones that are literally trying the best to curb things like racism, homophobia, and the list goes on. The West is the place where people are actually trying to do humanitarian things and trying to make a life better for people. The West is where People are trying to push things like free speech. And yet the West is the place where people think that their criticism needs to go most. And I find that so strange because it's like, what's happening in China? They're putting the, what the Uyghurs in concentration camps. I mean, in the Middle East, in a lot of places in the Middle East, the way women are treated and um, where certain religions are not allowed to practice there and whatever. And the list goes on. And people love to be quiet about that in Iran. Of course, there was that time when people went a little bit crazy because of the, the whole thing with the hijab and whatever. And that uh, poor young lady who got killed by the morality police and whatever. But after that, people are just kind of like, meh. Yeah, let's focus on the countries where they're actually trying to change things. And for me, it just blows me away. And I'm, I'm not saying that people should not have criticisms. Criticizing something means that you are trying to make it better. That's not what I'm saying. But I just think that you need to, you need to at least approach things with clarity and with nuance. You can't just label a whole bunch of people a certain name. You have to take in all these different factors and listen to people's real concerns. The reason why it's been so easy for me is because I've been quite happy to just try and view things in a nuanced kind of way. I try and give most people the benefit of the doubt. If someone shows me hate, if it's not genuinely impacting my life, if it's not enshrined in law, if it's not an overwhelming sense of, hey, everyone is acting this way towards me and it's difficult for me to live my life, then I don't care. And I've noticed that 
especially here in Finland, it's not about the skin color most of the time. Most of the time, it's got to do with culture. It's got to do with the way you act in public. If you are adding to the economy or simply just taking and being lazy, it's about everyone is paying taxes, tons of taxes. So the people here want to feel that that money is being used in a, a way that benefits everyone and doesn't disproportionately go to the people who aren't even trying to do anything. So yes, I I defend Finland most of the time. If there is something wrong, I am I am more than happy to address it. But you know what the interesting thing is, guys? I'm not even defending Finland as an outsider. I'm defending Finland as someone who lives here and who is a part of the culture, who pays taxes, who tries to to positively impact the world around me here. For me, this country has treated me really well. And I would love for us to to stop focusing on things like this, right? I've said in a previous video that the color of someone's skin is the least interesting thing about them. I'm more interested in, is that person a dick or is that person awesome? Sometimes I do feel like just focusing on race and making it the be all and end all is such a waste of energy. But I have to do it because if I don't do it, a lot of Finnish people, I feel, are too scared to defend Finland for themselves because they are afraid of being called racist. <laughs> Some of these words have lost have lost their power because people just throw it at anything and everything. Someone will tell me, oh, this guy is a racist. And then I read what the guy said and I'm like, OK, this guy sounds pretty xenophobic. That's not racist and someone might tell me oh it's still hate but the devil's in the details you have to accurately diagnose something so that you can apply the solution xenophobia and racism have two different solutions xenophobia is pretty much linked to some of the things that I mentioned before, like fear of the culture being diluted, fear of taxes going to the wrong places, fear of a different culture negatively vibing with the culture that's already here. And some of these things can be addressed by trying to integrate people well and by, by trying to talk about these things openly and it's a very different thing and it's very easily solved because it's not about how someone looks it's about how they act and the part they play in society like racism is a whole different ball game racism is someone hating you because of something you absolutely cannot change. And that is the color of your skin. And people like that exist. Yes, even here in Finland. And those people, who cares? You know, that's not what we are focusing on. And I think that most Finnish people, even the ones, a lot of Finnish people that are perceived or called racist or whatever, I'm willing to bet that a lot of them are more on the on this spectrum, hey, listen, I don't mind immigration, but as long as as long as it, it gels with us and it it adds to our culture as opposed to just making things worse. And it is a um, an issue that's happening all around the world, the Western countries right now. Having lived here for almost five years, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I too want to preserve all the good shit. I've lost so many things and they've all come back to me. I don't hear people talk about how their cars were stolen too often here. Finnish people pride themselves with honesty and all that good stuff. And for me personally, that's just how I was raised and the person that I am. But I f with that. That makes sense. And I want people who come here to have those 
those values too. I, I do want to protect that. And I think there's nothing wrong with speaking out against any policy that causes people to come here without trying to get them to integrate and to show them the things that people here find important. That I like the way things run here. Things run well, which means that that the decisions that have been made to run this country are working and we shouldn't do anything to change something that is not broken and it is not racist to say that. And yes, most places do need immigrants when it comes to work and that sort of stuff, but the same rules still apply. When people come here, they are adding to something and they are assimilating and they are trying to be a part of the culture so that Things just continue to grow. And then the last thing I will say before I end, I, I don't mean to do these long videos, guys, but the last thing I, I will just say is that Finland is also very relatively new to this whole thing of people from different cultures starting to make this place their home. And sometimes things take time and that is completely all right. But anyway, guys, Thank you so much for watching. Let me know some of your thoughts below. Let me know if there's anything else you want me to talk about. But until next time, guys, have a fantastic day, evening, or whenever you see this. And remember, if you want to support me, I would really appreciate it. But anyway, guys, bye.